I can still recall You have to be in the right summer. mental place to be able to do the amount of rewriting I did here. And I, leading up to coming to Louisville, I wasn't in a good mental place. I was very confused about my play. I, my director, Davis McCallum, and I had endless cups of coffee where I, we just talked about what the rewrites could be, but neither of us were sure. Um, and I, I kind of showed up in Louisville for first rehearsal with bitten nails, very nervous, because I, I knew that there was a play in there that wanted to bust out, but I wasn't really sure how to clarify the story. And um, this kind of miraculous thing happened here, which is on the very first day of rehearsal, we read the play, and uh, I went home and I, I had a martini with Davis and knew what to do. And I don't know, you know, sometimes it takes six months to figure it out, sometimes it takes a year to figure it out, Sometimes it takes six weeks to figure it out. Um, but here in Louisville, I figured out what my play wanted to be. Um, and I, I'm very proud of the work that Davis and I and my amazing dramaturg, um, Amy Wedgner, like we just, we really took that play apart. We took it apart um, and then put it back together again. So it was really collaborative and really, really fun. What I did a lot of was taking away. On the first day when we read the play, it was an hour and 46 minutes long, which is way too long. Element of P wants to be a lean and mean 90 minutes. So the very first thing I did was um, I cut 12 minutes off the play. And it's amazing because you don't miss it. If I told you what it was, you'd be like, I don't miss that at all. But it's so it's hard as a playwright sometimes to let go of, of, of things that get a laugh. Or, and uh, we did a mean and lean cut. Um, and got it down to 85 pages. And then from there, it was really just tuning up, you know, making every moment uh, sharp. And, and one of the things I think is really fun about all five of these characters is that there are a lot of sharp corners for all of them to turn. Um, so, so that was a lot of it in rehearsal, too. We'd find the corner, highlight it with a marker, and then I'd uh, angle it and get rid of everything else. So it, it was really a pleasure. Um, and it was very brave. I have to say, like, not brave of me, brave of the cast, because you come in on first day and you think you have X, Y, Z lines, and I radically changed things and dramatically rewrote certain sections. Um, and they, you know, they were so game and they were so generous, and uh, so it was really a perfect process. To me, Element of P, the play, um, is about a couple of things. Uh, I think it's about class. I think it's about uh, well, namely how class is something you could put on, but which is also can be easily taken from you. The kind of quick-paced, mercurial nature of class in America. I think that's one thing. I think identity is something I'm very interested in this play. Um, family, of course, sisters. Um, but there's also this this element of P theme for me, which is a little bit that you know, element of P comes up in the play because the character Devin. Uh, wears this necklace that says LMNOP, and it means something very, very personal to her. And it's funny because we don't really spend much time hearing about that, um, but I think it, it does sort of symbolize um, survival and also maybe a little bit of regret that we wear our wounds like a medal. Um, and I think that in LMNOP, one of the other things I'm, I'm thinking about and looking at and asking the audience to think about is really the nature of choice choices um, and the nature of mistake and, and regret and also how quickly these decisions can come up and um, and also that everyone has to go on their own journey you know we all have to wear our own necklaces <laughs> we all have to make our own choices for good or for bad and I think there's something about this play that these three women at the center of the play are all making huge choices live in this play um, and their their journeys are all their own we really kind of can't judge it we all have to have our own battle scars. That's something I'm interested in. I love my male characters in this play. I, I, there's been a couple of people who have said to me, you know, why do you even have men in this play? This is about these three women. And I think the men are really important, actually, because um, I think they create, create the world, and it's important to the context for these three women. So I need those men. Having said that, this is definitely a women play. This is about three very, very complicated, funny, I think very human, um, surprising women. And I think that the two men buffer and support and also nurture a story that is about these three women. Uh, to me, Peter's a very vivid character because 
the little information that we find out about him is so important. Um, so I, I've, I did spend a lot of time figuring out who Peter is, how he feels about the situation, and how I can, you know, hook my audience into understanding who he might be. But the fact that we don't meet him, I think it has a lot to do with what happened to me in real life. You know, Michaela is not based on a real person in the sense of her experience. I mean, that's all dramatized and I made that up. But I did wait on people um, like Michaela and Peter um, when I lived in Martha's Vineyard. And uh, so this one woman who I did quite a bit of babysitting for, exquisitely beautiful, a trophy wife, she had lots of traits in common with Michaela, but it's not Michaela. Um, but I never met her husband. The whole summer I babysat her kids and did her laundry and took her shopping and did all kinds of things. And this husband was like this God presence, you know. Who, and when, when he was coming, I was not allowed to come to the house because he was coming and the kids were dressed a certain way and she was, and it was just sort of this, the presence of the absent character that felt really right for this world. I stumbled into playwriting by accident as a senior in college. You should always take that weird class that you don't think you're going to be interested in. And I was an English major and I thought I would get a PhD and I was going to be a, you know, a serious literature scholar um, and I was shy and a friend of mine recommended this um, playwriting class and I'd heard it was an easy A, but also a great class. So I decided to take it and it dramatically changed everything. And I finished college and all my friends were going off to jobs and careers and I tanked my whole plan and packed my little car and moved to Martha's Vineyard. I just had this feeling that in order to write plays, I had to get some experience. Um, and I, I wanted to have an adventure and I wanted to go somewhere where I didn't know anyone. Um, and. Looking back, I mean, I would never do that now. You know, like as you grow up, you know, I like well, I'm just too attached to my dog and my husband. I would never do that now. But at 20, 20, uh, this seemed like a great idea. So I, I moved to Martha's Vineyard and I got a job at the Edgar Town Yacht Club, um, where we were trained for months how to serve, you know, in this very, very, very prestigious um, culinary institute kind of thing. And uh, and then when the patrons showed up you know, they're lounging at the Yacht Club and I really overheard a lot of fantastic things and I overheard some unbelievable stories. But I think most interestingly, I got to see how the women in this world treated each other. Um, and there were always exceptions to this rule. But generally speaking, there was kind of two tiers of women. There was the wives who came from old money and then there were the wives who married into it because they were really beautiful. Um, and as a young woman that summer, I was sort of so hungry to investigate some of that dynamic, and I saw some real cruelty. Um, and I did watch a woman get thrown out on her ass. But I watched a one of these beautiful women get thrown out of the club, um, literally and also legally. And, and uh, you know, the, the kind of teeth that that world has made a real impression on me. It took me 13 years to write about it, but I've been thinking about it ever since it just it affected me that much. I have to say I am, I am just unbelievably honored to be here at all. Um, the writers in this festival are writers that I am obsessed with and read back in New York and read their work and go, wow. And so the idea that I'm even here is it's, it's just a crazy honor and I'm, I'm so excited. So that's A. And then B, to have this kind of reception here, I just feel so loved. You know, I turned around at a certain point at the after party and my mom was sitting with with Mark Masterson and Patty, like they've been friends for years, and I just, I feel so taken care of here, and, and I think that that's really why I was able to kind of open myself up and do so much writing here, or cutting, or however you want to phrase it, but it's really indicative of how safe I feel here, and how nurtured I feel, and sure, there's, I guess in theory, this, we're under a lot of pressure, but boy, does it not feel like it, it feels like I'm, I live here now. <laughs> Feels like this is my new theater home. Um, anyway, I will be desperate to come back. And and the audiences here have been amazing. And because some of these plays are challenging, and um, I was so impressed. Every, I mean, I heard the conversations afterwards, and people were really engaged with it, like I was. And um, I was just very impressed. I, I think the theater-going audience here is very smart and very hip.